guys, it's Charity. This video is going to be a video all about the accessories for my Wonder Woman cosplay. If you watched a few videos ago, there was a full video overview walkthrough on my Wonder Woman breastplate. So this is going to be specifically like the headband, the armband, bracers, what else? Shin pieces like boots, shoes, and the belt that goes over top of the breastplate like the sheath. Keep watching, I hope you enjoy and I'm excited to show you all the pieces. Most of this costume was redone, so the breastplate was the original breastplate for my very first time wearing the costume. However, I redid most of the costume aside from the shield and sword. So the two props I kept the same just because those are quite a big project to take on. Um, I was doing this all, I kind of remade most of this costume a couple days before Calgary Comic Expo. I did make the original costume really quickly. The first time I made it, I made all of the pieces basically the night before or the about two nights before. So everything was made in two nights aside from the breastplate. So then the next one I was like, you know what, I gotta remake this. I'm gonna have tons of time to do it. And you know how cosplayers are where we think we have all this time. <laughs> And then I was just so busy working on my Sylvanas that I ended up completely forgetting. I didn't forget it. I said I got lots of time, which I'm really good at. And, uh, and then <laughs> it was about two days before again. And I did all of it in about two or three days. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I think it all turned out way better than the first time. I really, really am, am happy with the results. Uh, and I hope that you guys enjoy the video. Okay, so I have my box beside me of all of my Wonder Woman pieces. Um, I'm gonna just start head to toe. The very first thing is the headband. So this headband was really, really simple. There's kids yelling in the background, sorry. Um, really simple, I think it's real cute, and it's super, super simple, really easy to make. All it is is foam. There's a layer of foam, uh, two layers of foam here of just plain craft foam. It's a pretty easy pattern, I just followed the picture. Uh, I added some really simple elastic straps. This thing is so strong. It's just held with glue gun. I coated it with the same thing I coated everything else with. I just coated it with Mod Podge uh, once. The, um, spray Mod Podge. It's a really good choice if you're looking for a fast, easy primer slash you can use it as, as a um, clear coat over top, which is what I did. So this stuff dries super, super fast, so I did that first. I painted it with just a plain gold, and then I did just a plain black dry brush method that, that a lot of people use, um, just because that was really fast. I did a little bit extra shading here in there, but um, yeah, pretty simple. I like it, it's easy. Um, the next pieces would, I guess that'd be the armband. If I can find it. I don't know where, my, where the armband is. So I can't find the armband, but it's the exact same idea. So the same as the, the headband, I just did a black dry brush method, same primer, same clear coat. I added two little elastics on the insides here. But if I was to remake this, this is a tip for you. Do a thicker strap here because this can tend to pinch. I just only had smaller elastic, so that's what I used. But if you're making it, use a thicker elastic here. Um, but it's pretty simple, just craft foam. The next pieces then would be the bracers. So they look like this. I hope that focuses. Um, they're really simple to make, but the patterning was really strange. So if you look at the back, this, the way this lines up is very different. It's supposed to line up, I don't know if you'll be able to see that properly, but um, yeah, it's kind of just a weird, it's not a straight line, so it was a little confusing for me to figure out, but once you get the pattern, the rest is pretty simple. Uh, there's an extra little piece over here to add a look of a second layer there of the metal, um, and then I put a triangle in the back, if you can see that, and that adds the little layer here. This is pretty flimsy here, but this part isn't a huge deal because when you put it on, I'll just show you what it looks like on, um, this doesn't really hit anything, so it's not a really big deal if that's not um, double-sided, but you can do that too. So the rest of this is just double-sided craft foam. The thing is, you can use a thicker craft foam, it's just I buy this same 
cheap roll of craft foam from Michaels every time. Uh, just because that's what I have available and easy to get access to really fast. The paint job is there's X-Acto knife in all of these bits, the details here, and all of them are heat gunned so that they spread apart a little bit. Same with where I did all of the damage, just like I did on the breastplate. I cut it and then I heat gunned it and it separates a little bit. It's perfect, really easy, and it's a quick a quick thing that adds a lot of detail, so don't forget that part when you're making damage marks. Um, the back though, the difference with this is I, in my old bracers, I had uh, leather bits going across. I ended up with not enough time, so I just left the these bits like this, which wasn't a big deal because most of the time you're not seeing too much of the inside anyways, but if you want to, and it is always nice to have a little bit extra detail, I would add over top of the elastic on the outside just a little bit of uh, pull through with a D-ring, pull through leather, or fake leather, whatever you want to use. Um, and yeah, that's basically the bracers. I was working on my Kita stack at the same time, so I would just kind of go back and forth between those two things. It's the easiest thing to do if you are working on a very small time uh, spectrum. And you know what? Most cosplayers are, unfortunately. I feel like we always think that we have so much time and then every cosplayer I know is working the last day basically to get it done. <laughs> Procrastination isn't a good thing. Just like I said before, the spray on Mod Podge, perfect for this because it gets it done really really quick so if you're working on lots of things, you let that dry for a little bit, go back to it, it's basically dry instantly. Okay, that's not true, but it is dry really fast where you can work and put a base coat on right after. The next thing is my favorite part of the whole costume right now, including more than the breastplate. I freaking love these. I worked really hard on, on the patterning of these and they turned out awesome. So these, this is the shin pieces or the boot pieces or the greaves or whatever you want to call them. There's lots of different names for them. This is what they look like. So what I did here is I actually used such a strange material. I would never think to use this. My dad actually used it on another uh, another cosplay that he did. He did a steampunk like robotic arm and um, and he used this and I it's, it's ingenious. I've never thought to use it. It's crazy carpet like the I don't know another name for it. Like the sleds. I don't know if there's another if you call it something else somewhere else but a crazy carpet which is like those plastic sleds that roll up um, they're just thin plastic, but this one comes with EVA on top. So I used that um, to my advantage and I made a really, really solid piece. If you saw in my last video, I don't use Warbler, not because I don't want to, but because it's quite, quite pricey um, if you're doing especially a big build. So this worked really well if you're looking for a really stable option. All I did is I cut my pattern out, which if you're looking for a pattern for that, if I find one, I'll put it in the description box. Um, if I don't, comment down below if you're looking for it and I can make one for you. All I did is I did my pattern, I cut with my X-Acto knife. I didn't cut the plastic, I only cut the, the EVA foam on the outside so that it bent really nicely and then I did the same thing to the piece over top. This is also just that plastic EVA foam crazy carpet thing. <laughs> and, and then for the knee, because this is rounded, I rounded out two pieces. Somebody asked this in my overview of the breastplate, how I did the boob cups. And I rounded both pieces out separately and then I put them together. That was the question, was with it, whether I did it at the same time. So I did two rounded pieces, then I stuck it together, and then I cut it into the exact shape that I wanted. So that makes it really sturdy because I added on top this same plastic EVA mix from before I added on top of here. So this is really, really like hard, like it's really sturdy because I added that plastic on top and then this is the same plastic. And then what I did here, added two pieces of elastic here. So it's attached to this top piece so that when you're moving, like when you're pivoting, like bending down or walking, this pivots with your knee. The way I attached everything is with some Velcro, industrial strength Velcro, which is used for a lot of cosplays that I do. It's just really easy to work with, it's super strong. If you don't have any in your cosplayer, go buy some because you can use it for all sorts of things. And I did the same thing for all over here. So this is just some really simple fabric. And if you're wondering, the rivets here 
aren't actual rivets. You can use rivets, like it'll go through this really nice, and I recommend doing that. I think that would look really cool. I just used glue gun, and then I painted them silver, which I think, I mean, it's an easy, quick, quick fix, but like I said, I did a lot of this costume very quickly in a very short period of time. Basically how this goes on is you just undo all of these, you stick your leg inside there, and then this curves with your, I did the same thing where I did the exacto knife here and here, put another piece on top, and then you just, that's the piece. The next piece is the shoes. So the last thing that's left, um, and I think it's a really important thing, they turned out so much better than the first ones. They look a lot more accurate to the movie version. They just Velcro here, with industrial strength Velcro again. It, it would have been so easy to make these if you had a regular closed toe shoe. I didn't, and I didn't want to go buy one. So what I did is I actually made a base form for the whole shoe, because I liked the height of this wedge. I thought it was perfect. Just a really cheap Walmart pair that I bought years and years and years ago. They have a little, kind of like a back strap you can see on the inside. So that's attached to the back of this piece here. But I basically did a whole pattern of the shoe and then I glued it together here. That was a longer process than a lot of the rest of this costume was because I wasn't really sure how to pattern this out. But I wanted to use them because I really liked the wedge and I didn't want to go buy another pair. I put another piece here in the back. Uh, I did some lining line detail there. Uh, I did the same thing where I put these extra pieces here. Lots of this is just a dry brush method. I think if I did it again, I'd put snaps for the, the shoes. So that's a good tip there is to use snaps for the shoes. I think that would work really well. Um, but again, I use a lot of the stuff that I just already have. All right, so the last piece is just this piece here. It's the belt harness piece. It has, it's pretty simple. It has a buckle on the back. Ignore this, it clearly doesn't fit my mannequin. Uh, <laughs> has a buckle on the back. And there's a piece that attaches here. And here, this is the sheath. There's a piece riveted here and here. So that piece just goes basically right around there. So that's where the rope is attached. And all this is made of is literally just some old belts, rivets, and some orange twine rope that I painted gold and silver. This is just from a scrap belt bucket that we have, and, um, and it worked really well. So, like I said earlier, I used Mod Spray Mod Podge to do most of the priming and the, uh, and the clear coat at the end. So. I'm gonna tell you again, this is what it's called. Um, it works wonderfully. It is so fast drying. I love it. Um, it's a little bit more of a matte finish. So if you're looking for a really, really, really shiny finish, go for the painted stuff, the paint on stuff. So if you're trying to do something really fast and you don't wanna go through with a tiny little paintbrush to avoid it turning white and not clearly drying, uh, this is the easiest thing I can tell you. It's called Mod Podge Gloss Clear Acrylic Sealer. Um, make sure you use this in a well-ventilated area, but aside from that, definitely recommend it. I still have over half of this, and I did all of this, like I did one coat for primer, painted, two coats for a clear coat, and then two coats on that as well plus a couple other random things that I just really quickly primed. So, seriously guys, this stuff is worth it. I think it's like $14. That's the costume, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed filming it. I love looking back at all of the stuff that I, that I did on this costume. It's a really quick build, but I love how it turned out. If you've watched the Wonder Woman movie, Comment down below what your favorite outfit was. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you really loved this video, share it with your friends, because I'm sure they want to know just as much as you, and I want your friends to know. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Until the next video, happy cosplay.